Legendary Broadway composer Stephen Sondheim once said that his favorite song he's ever written was Someone in a Tree from his 1976 musical Pacific Overtures. We'll uncover some of that mystery in this video and stick around further for a surprise Hamilton connection. The second half of the video will be the entirety of the song with musical analysis commentary. Today is March 31st, 2024. It was 170 years ago when Commodore Perry arrived from the US and landed right here in Yokohama, Japan. It was exactly 170 years ago when him and Japanese officials signed the Treaty of Kanagawa. It was one of the most crucial events in Japanese history when Japan decided, or more accurately violently coerced, into opening its borders ending its long period of seclusion and opening itself up for foreign trading and foreigners. This event was captured most famously by Wilhelm Hein, a German artist who was assigned to capture the events of Perry's expedition. Here he captures the hurriedness with the Americans and the Japanese soldiers and officials milling about and an array of boats and ships in the harbor. Perry is leading a group of his officials towards some of the members of the Japanese delegation to the Treaty House, which was constructed just for these negotiations. In the painting of two cultures coming together, this painting emphasizes contrast. The neat row of American soldiers contrasting the crowd of Japanese. The pomp and circumstance of this serious event contrasted by the two dogs in the middle of the frame, carefree, unawares, and enjoying life. The business on the shore contrasts heavily to the calm, empty blue skies that dominate half of the canvas. The treaty house on the left symbolizes the new Japan, contrasting the old Japan on the right with the religious shrine, shrine of the water god, and a beautiful towering Japanese tree. And of course, everything has changed now. All the surfaces have been covered in concrete. The shoreline and where I was standing earlier has been extended. Everyone in the painting is long gone. Where the treaty house once stood is now the Kanagawa Prefecture Government Office. Where the shrine once stood was the British Consulate and now the Yokohama Archives Library Museum. The only thing left standing from the painting is the tree. Well, kinda. Let's, let's go take a look. The tree was mostly destroyed twice, once during the Great Fire of 1866 and again in the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. But the roots stayed strong and sprouted new saplings each time. And normally there is a more direct route to the courtyard, but there are renovations happening at the moment. Though I have no direct proof, I would suspect that this is the tree that Sondheim and Weedman had in mind when writing Someone in a Tree. This symbolic tree will come back later to this. Let's first talk about the history of Japan and the musical Pacific Overtures. In 1853, Commodore Matthew C. Perry led a mission to Japan with four warships, using a show of military might to pressure Japanese authorities into negotiations. His visit led to the signing of the Treaty of Kanagawa in 1854, opening Japanese ports to American ships and marking the end of Japan's isolationist policy. This event was a crucial step towards Japan's increased international engagement during the Meiji period. Pacific Overtures is a musical conceived by John Weedman originally as a straight play about the pivotal moment in Japanese history when Japan was forced to open its borders to the foreign powers and to follow the immediate repercussions of this. The song, Someone in a Tree, is near the end of Act 1 and is about the signing of this treaty. Not only is it the most pivotal moment of the show, but it was one of the most pivotal moments in all of Japanese history. Sondheim and Weedman brilliantly broke down parts of the song in a short documentary, Anatomy of a Song, hosted by a young Frank Rich, who is a theater critic and one of the first to recognize the future legendary status of Sondheim. In musicalizing the song, they ran into a huge problem. Probably the crucial moment in Japanese history, and certainly the crucial moment in the show. And John informed us that nothing dramatic at all happened in the treaty house which left us with a large hole because it was something that had to be covered and left us really with two choices. One is to make up our own history with lots of uh, drawn guns and uh, shouted imprecations or to invent something. And out of that discussion that day came the notion of somebody's memory. In such a historically undramatic event, Sondheim wrote the song from the fragmented perspectives of bystanders. An old man with questionable memory as he remembers witnessing it from the tree as a young naive boy who could see it but not hear it. 
and from a warrior under the treaty house who could hear but not see. And the narrator guides us along and acts as the audience. They all sing about their outsider perspective as they were not in the room where it happened. Yes, Lin-Manuel Miranda is quoted to not only have taken inspiration from Pacific Overtures when writing Hamilton, but also strongly influenced by Someone in a Tree when writing The Room Where It Happens. More about that later. Back to Someone in a Tree. What is the song really about? No longer is the song about objective hard facts of the historical event, nor told about or from the perspective of the historical figures actually there but three fictional characters giving their accounts of what they saw. The chorus of the song sums it up. And there's someone in a tree For the day is incomplete Without someone in a tree Nothing happened here I am hiding in a tree I'm a fragment of the day If I weren't used to say Things would happen A lot to unpack here from the chorus. It's such a poignant thought. If I were not there, how did it happen in the way I just told you? Another song with a similar vibe is How I Saved Roosevelt from the 1990 musical Assassins, also by Sondheim and Weedman. This song presents a fictional news report following an attempted assassination of President Roosevelt, where various characters share their perspectives of the event and claim involvement in thwarting the assassination, whether their accounts are true or not. They go on to paint their message with examples, saying that it is not the smaller elements that are important that make the great whole. This point also parallels a major theme in another of Sondheim's work, Sunday in the Park with George from 1983. The massive pointillism painting by George Seurat is deceptively made up of smaller dots. The painting isn't a Sunday afternoon in the park, it's just a bunch of little dots. It's not about the treaty house and the historical events for these characters, it's about that someone was in a tree to witness it. I really like what this user dreadnought wrote in this forum. Over time, I found myself returning again and again to Someone in a Tree, because as I grew, I found myself attracted to a song that is about someone looking at their place in a big and interesting world and trying to make sense of it from a limited perspective, and about how history happens to everybody, not just the people making the demands and signing the papers. And as Victor1930 commented on YouTube, I remember when I first saw the show, I didn't really understand it. I thought it was weird that you never get any information about what was actually said or what the terms of the treaties were. But as I got older, I realized it wasn't about the facts of the occasion. It's about perception and the relationship of subject to object and the influence of the observer on the observed. It's about the entry point to the universal through the specific. And it transcends space and time in the process. It literally is the very thing it is talking about. Similar to the song, The Room Where It Happens doesn't dwell on the exact history. This song from Hamilton captures the moment that the Compromise of 1790 was reached. The Compromise of 1790 settled a dispute over the new US Capitol's location and state debts from the Revolutionary War. Alexander Hamilton pushed for federal assumptions of the debts, aiding northern states, opposed by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison for southern interests. To compromise, Hamilton agreed to place the capital along the Potomac River, leading to Washington, D.C.'s establishment. This pivotal compromise not only settled the disagreement, but also made Washington, D.C. the permanent capital, showcasing the new federal government's strength. It was a huge event for American history that took place over dinner between these three men, and for that reason, nobody knows what was really said behind these closed doors. Now, Lin-Manuel Miranda, similarly to Sondheim, could have written a dramatic scene fabricating the events of this compromise. However, he chose to write it from the perspective of Aaron Burr and his speculations and reactions from the reports of the meeting. It is also an important character arc moment for Burr, as his envy of not being involved in these big political decisions motivates him to more strongly pursue his political career. Lin-Manuel Miranda not only directly took inspiration from Pacific Overtures when writing Hamilton, but also Someone in a Tree when writing The Room Where It Happens. 
He even performed Someone in a Tree when in college. And coincidentally, similar to Sondheim, Lin-Manuel Miranda considers The Room Where It Happens one of the best songs he's ever written. The song reminds us that history is not about the grand events and figures we learn about, but also about the individuals who are often overlooked but play crucial roles in shaping the course of events. History is relentless. In Pacific Overtures, before this historic Treaty of Kanagawa event, life was moving along. After the historic event, although big changes occurred, life kept moving along. The end of the musical is a song next, first heralding the great achievements of modern Japan, and then looking forward to the future of history of next. The passage of time is relentless. The song in itself captures this relentlessness as well. Sondheim attributes the success to this constant forward musical momentum. I like to get uh, some kind of accompaniment figure. Mm -hmm. Which in this song was interesting. One of the reasons I like this song so much is that I decided one of the qualities of Japanese music, or let's call it Oriental music, that wasn't being taken advantage of enough in the score was its relentlessness. How it goes on and on and on. And I thought, I'd like to write a song, see how long I can sustain interest by taking an accompaniment figure and just having it go on over and over and over again with the tiniest changes in it. Each note of the song plays its part to create a whole work that moves forward. As we reflect on the layers of history and perspective encapsulated in Someone in the Tree, we're reminded of the enduring symbol of the tree itself. Despite wars, fires, and earthquakes, the tree stands, a silent witness to the ever-changing world around it. Just as the characters in the song sought to make sense of their place in history from their limited perspectives, so too does the tree continue to grow, its roots anchoring it firmly in the past even as it reaches for the sky, a testament to the relentless march of time and the enduring power of living history. Stick around later as we watch and listen to Someone in a Tree with some musical analysis commentary. But before we do that, some very, very brief music context. The accompaniment is made up of a repetitive ostinato rhythm. The melody consists of four main melodic ideas. This first one that has three notes. It occasionally repeats sequentially. The second melodic line is this, often followed with an echo. The third melodic idea is one that breaks away from the quick notes with these longer notes. The fourth melodic idea is related to the previous ones. It concludes with the inverse of the first one and occasionally leads in with the first one. And prominently in the chorus, it leads in with what is reminiscent of the third melodic idea. I will highlight these melodic ideas while we listen. Pardon me, I was there. You were where? At the treaty house. house. The treaty there house. was a tree. Which was where? Very near. Over here. Maybe over there. But there were trees then everywhere. May I show you? There if were you trees please. then everywhere. But you were there. And I was there. Let me show you. If you please. I was younger then. I was good at climbing trees I was younger then I saw everything I was hidden all the time It was easier to climb I was younger then I saw everything Where they came and where they went I was part of the event I was someone in the tree I was younger then Tell him what I see 
I am in a tree, I am ten, I am in a tree. I was younger then. In between the eaves I can see, tell me what I see. I was only ten. I see men and matting. Some are old, some chatting. If it happened, I was there. I, I saw everything. everything. I was someone in the tree. Tell him what I see. Some of them have gold on their coats. One of them has gold. He was younger then. <laughs> Someone crawls around passing notes. Someone very old. He was only ten. And there's someone in a tree. For the day is incomplete. Without someone in a tree. Nothing happened here I am hiding in the tree I'm a fragment of the day If, If I, I weren't, weren't used, used to say Things would happen in the way That they happened here It's I'm a fragment pen. of the day It's I the pebble, not the stream It's the ripple, not the sea Not the Tree. Pardon me, I am here, if you please, I am also They here. kept drinking cups of tea. They kept sitting on the floor. They, They drank many cups of tea. No, we told him that before. If you please, I am here. You are where? In the treaty house. The treaty or house. very near. Can you hear? I'm below. So I underneath the floor. And so I can't see anything. I can hear them, but I can't see anything. But you can hear. But I can hear. Shall I listen? If you please. I can hear them now. I shall try to shift my knees. I can hear them now. I hear everything. I'm the part that's underneath. With my sword inside my sheet, I can hear them now. One is over me. If they knock, then I appear. I'm a part of what I hear I'm the fragment underneath I can hear them now Tell us what you hear First I hear a creak and a thump Now I hear a clink Then they talk a bit Many times they shout when they speak Other times they think Or they argue it I hear floorboards groaning Angry growls Much Since I hear them, they are there As they argue it I'm the listener underneath Someone reads a list from a box Someone talks of laws Then they fan a bit Someone bangs a fist Someone knocks Now there was a pause Then they argue it But we won, no you can't And we won't, but we need it And we won, will you grant If you don't, we concede it I can see it the night They lit yellow 